I just received my new package of oxygen absorbers. Uh, this is a pack of 50, and we're going to go ahead and open these up. Now, what I normally do is I open up my package of oxygen absorbers, and I repack them in these smaller containers. And I put four of these oxygen absorbers in these smaller bags so that when my medium uh, freeze dryer gets done, which has four trays, I have four absorbers in each one of these packs. I just go open it up and I go ahead and package my food. So the question sometimes arises, how fast do you have to repackage these oxygen absorbers? And I get that question a lot. And some people get really panicky when they open these packets up and they have to really rush, 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 rush to get these uh, absorbers to be repacked so that these absorbers don't go bad. Well, the question arises, how much time do you really have to package or to repackage oxygen absorbers? And I'm here to answer that question and that you actually have quite a bit of time to repackage oxygen absorbers. The oxidation rate in an oxygen absorber takes hours to do. It doesn't take minutes, it takes hours. So you've got plenty of time to repackage these little guys before you really have to start to worry. And we're actually gonna test this to see how long it takes for an oxygen absorber to actually work. So right here, I have my jar set up. I have a five minute jar, 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute and 60 minute jar. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna open this up and we're going to leave these oxygen absorbers out on my counter for five, 10, 15, 20, 30, 45 and 60 minutes. They're just gonna be sitting here, just biding their time until they go into the test jars. And then we're going to see how much oxygen they can absorb after be after being left exposed for that amount of time. This is gonna be a really good test to answer your question, how long these can be left out. And the answer is going to really surprise you. So we have the little red eye right here that tells me that everything in here is just fine. I'm going to open these up and take out seven absorbers. out of this package. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna put these aside for now. I'm gonna repackage these up here. Put those aside. So we're gonna take these and we're just gonna set them aside. And I'm gonna take my phone here. And we're gonna put it on stopwatch mode. And as it hits the 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 45, 60 minute mode, then we're gonna go ahead and start preparing these for the water test. I have my duct tape and I have my little tool here. And this is going to be my five minute jar. I already have it marked here. So I'm gonna take a piece of duct tape and I'm gonna make my little loop here like so. And we're gonna put the duct tape down in the jar. And we're gonna take one of my first oxygen absorbers and just put these aside for now. And we're at coming up on two minutes. So I might just have to wait just a few minutes until we get closer to five. I got all my bowls 
of uh, water waiting. So we're at two minutes and we just need to wait until I get closer to five to start my test here. So this is going to be my five minute and we'll just go 10, 15, 20, 30, 45, and 60 minutes here. But we're not going to make you wait for all this stuff and so we'll just have to pause this and fast forward this until we get closer to that time. Okay, we're coming up on four and a half minutes. So we're going to go ahead and put this down inside and tap it into place. Okay, so this is our five minute uh, oxygen absorber and we're almost to the five minute mark here. And so we're going to go ahead and put this in the water and then we're going to go, go ahead and continue with all these other ones and we'll go ahead and do our test. All seven jars have been inverted into colored water. This is the first one we did. So this oxygen absorber right here sat out for five minutes. And this one over here sat out for 60 minutes before we put them into the jar and inverted them in water. So we're going to see how long these will go and how much water they will suck up. Now, if everything goes what I think will go, this one will do the most, this one should do the least because this one already started going warm. These ones right here, the first three here, by the time I put them in the jar, the oxygen absorbers were all, already warm. And so it'll be interesting to see how everything turns out. So we'll, do, we'll see how long it takes. It has been six hours later from the time we did the original experiment and I got great news. Every one of these bottles have reached basically, well, the 200 cc mark. Now, technically it's 198 cc's, but for all intents and purposes, we can call it 200. So this is a five minute, 10 minute, 15 minute, 20 minute, 30 minute, 45 minute, and even the 60 minute has reached it. So this, oxygen absorber sat on my counter for 60 minutes before conduct before starting the test so it's up to the mark and I mean this one is as good as the five minute one back here so we can take a look at this five minute one that's totally full and the 60 minute one the one hour totally full so we're gonna go through and we're gonna dump all of these and we're going to continue on with our experiment. The first dump is all done. Everything is started over and now we're working towards our second dump. So, so far everything is basically done 200 cc's. It has been 36 hours and we're ready for the second dump. We are coming up on the third dump for some of these. So the five minute is getting dumped. The 10 minute is getting dumped. The 15 minute is getting dumped. The 20 minute is getting dumped. And the 30 minute is getting dumped. However, the 45 and the 60 minute is not quite ready yet. They're almost to the point this one is about three sixteenths or a quarter underneath it that's about an eighth inch so we're going to kind of keep an eye on these two guys and see how they progress but they're not quite ready it took a few extra hours but our 45 minutes and 60 minutes are now done so these two are actually in 52 hours to get them to the third dump but we'll go ahead and restart these over again and see what else they can do. We are winding down on our experiment. These two aren't quite yet to be dumped. They may have stopped, but we're going to go ahead and mark them and dump them anyway and see if anything progresses. But everything else is ready to be dumped for the fourth time. 
So we're going to go ahead and exchange the air and see what can happen again. We are at 100 hours in our oxygen absorber test. I'm ready to shut everything down. We're going to go ahead and calculate how much uh, oxygen all these absorbers have reached. We've done this for 100 hours, which is just a little bit more than four days. So we're going to go ahead and empty these out and do the final calculations on each of these jars to see where we stand on our absorbers. And then we're going to calculate how long you can leave an oxygen absorber out in the atmosphere and see how much of a difference that makes. So let's take a look at the results and you'll be actually quite interested in these. So right here we have the five minutes for the five minute jar, the 10 minute jar, the 15 minute jar, the 20 minute jar, the 30 minute jar, 45 minute jar, and the 60 minute jar. I think you see where I'm going here. But well, let's put up the line that would be the threshold for the 300 cc oxygen absorber right there. So you could say that is our finish line. So we have everyone ready at the starting point, ready to go and they're off and as you can see everyone is blowing by the 300 cc line so everyone did really really good so you can see way up here you can see the totals amount this one almost hit 1100 but 1099 1042 983 1038 999 almost a thousand 173 799 almost 800 right here so this mark right here is the equivalent of one oxygen absorber. So the total reaction time for this experiment was 100 hours. I probably could have pushed it a little bit longer than 100 hours, but at 100 hours, things were pretty much slowing down. And so I went ahead and called it at that point. So we're going to go ahead and put these other lines in here. So this is basically 300 cc's for one oxygen absorber. This is another oxygen absorber, another oxygen absorber. So if you take a look at this first line, this thing did almost three and a half times what this oxygen absorber was worth. And these were all 300 cc oxygen absorbers. If you take a look at this right here, this is 60 minutes, the one hour mark. This is the oxygen absorber that was left out in the open for one hour. And even with, after being left out for an hour, this still pulled almost 800 cc's, almost two and a half times what this oxygen absorber was worth. So if we go ahead and put in the percentage, you'll see that everything did really, really good. Anywhere from 366% down to the low at 257%. Now, I don't know why the 45 minute mark was a little bit less than the 60 minute mark or why the 15 minute mark was a little bit lower than the 20 minute mark. This just happens to be just how things happen to work out. I have no explanation for that. Now, if we take away the percentages and add a tread line, this can also tell us some interesting stuff. So this is the tread line of what could happen if this were to go on for additional time. So basically, if we were to pretend that this experiment were, were to carry on for hours longer, and if this tread line was to continue, I would probably be able to leave out an oxygen absorber for almost two and a half hours and still be able to get 300 cc's out of an oxygen absorber. So what does this tell us? Well, that says that you don't have to freak out when you're unpacking and packaging or working with an oxygen absorber. You don't need to worry about leaving your oxygen absorbers out in the open. You have plenty of time. Just be due diligent and take care of them as soon as possible. So in summary, what's inside an oxygen absorber? And this is important. It's primarily iron powder. That is the magic pixie dust that's inside an oxygen absorber. And what's magical about it is that one gram of iron powder has the potential of absorbing 300 cc's. 
So if you have pure, unadulterated iron powder, and let's say you have three grams of iron powder inside an oxygen absorber with all the proper secondary uh, ingredients, then that oxygen absorber at three grams potentially should be able to absorb 900 cc's of oxygen. Well, along with the iron powder, there's also carbon or charcoal, and there's also different types of chlorides, and chlorides are, is basically nothing more than salts. And depending on the manufacturer, there's also other secondary ingredients that they will put into an oxygen absorber to control the chemical reaction uh, of the oxygen absorber. The chemical reaction is not something that happens really, really fast. It's something that is slow and steady. In the experiment I performed, it took over 100 hours to complete the total oxidation of the oxygen absorber. And so if you're going to be playing around with an oxygen absorber for two or three minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, it's not to worry. Don't freak out. You have plenty of time to work with it. And the last thing we need to take a look at is size matters. If you have an oxygen absorber that is the size of a postage stamp, and there are a lot of oxygen absorbers out there that claim to be a 300 or 400 or 500 oxygen absorber, and they're these teeny tiny things, size matters. Because the smaller the oxygen absorbers, the less iron powder is going to be inside. Remember, we need iron powder. One gram equals 300 cc's. And most reputable manufacturers of oxygen absorbers are going to put in a, a lot of extra iron powder just to make sure that the end user is going to get their money's worth. So size matters. Make sure your oxygen absorbers are relative size. If they're these teeny tiny little things, well then you could have a problem. I've seen oxygen absorbers that are quite small. I won't name names, but there are companies out there that just they're companies you got to steer clear from. So anyway, I hope you find this helpful. And most of all, I hope you learn something. One of my rules is to learn something new every day. Please subscribe. And as always, go forth and freeze dry the world. And I will send you another video soon.